More now on Kate Middleton's shock cancer diagnosis this morning. And we're joined by Talk TV Royal Editor Sarah Hewson, who's live for us in London. Good morning to you, Sarah. Uh, the latest news that we've just had is a statement released by Harry and Meghan. Uh, what have they said? Morning to you, Jane and Alex. Yeah, a very short statement from the Sussexes in the last few minutes or so, uh, wishing health and healing uh, to Kate and the family and hoping that they are uh, able to do so privately and in peace. Uh, it's a gesture, but I think it's a small gesture. And I think any hopes of reconciliation, despite this really awful news uh, about the Princess of Wales, whether that's going to bring those two sides back together, I think that's not going to happen at this stage. I think the wounds run really, really deep. And I think William is so protective of his wife at the best of times, but not least of all now, and feels very strongly about the hurt that was caused to her by Harry's book and, of course, by the Netflix documentary. Um, and also, this has been around now for a couple of hours now, just breaking as we're waking up here in Australia. Um, your reaction to this news, first of all, I just want to go back a bit to, to uh, this breaking this morning because we're still in shock here in Australia. What's it like where you are? Uh, so are we, Alex, mm. because we had been hoping that the Princess of Wales was doing well in her recovery and that we would be seeing her back to public duties after the Easter holidays. And, you know, we'd had those sightings of her. And then today to hear this devastating news that she has received a cancer diagnosis. And the statement that she made, I thought it was heartbreaking. I thought it was emotional. It was selfless as she expressed her solidarity with others going through this and told them they were not alone. But the most poignant part of it for me was the fact that they'd chosen to release this statement now, today, because it's the day that their three children, George, Charlotte and Louis, have broken up from school for the Easter holidays. And by doing it this afternoon, this evening, it means they can kind of wrap those children in a bubble and protect them mm. from all of the gossip and speculation that they can answer the questions in their own way. And they talked about having to have that time in order to tell the children and Kate wanting to reassure the children, I am well, I'm going to be well, I'm doing OK. And that was really heartbreaking because over the past few weeks and months, I think sometimes it's been forgotten that at the centre of this is a woman, a mother, a wife and a family who are all dealing with the most devastating and shocking of news. Yeah. And while they've been dealing with that, they've also been facing all that speculation uh, and pressure from the outside world, speculation over where is Kate, you know, why has she been touching up the photographs, look, here she is uh, at the supermarket, but is it really her or is it a body double? Mm. All, all of this kind of silly talk yeah, in many ways, ridiculous. while she's dealing with this incredibly um, emotional and private news, she is now asking for privacy. She's given people what they want. She's told them what's wrong. She's fronted the cameras. Do you think people will respect her privacy now? Oh, they have to, uh, don't they, Jane? I mean, you heard her plea there that she needs that privacy to protect her children, and that is what she and William have always been about, trying to protect the family unit and give their children as much normality as possible, but also for her own healing, to enable her to make a full recovery. And you're right, the speculation and the conspiracy theories have been wild. They have been completely crazy. And they haven't just been in some kind of dark recesses of the internet and on social media. They've, they've spread and they've been on US chat shows. They've been celebrities, Kim Kardashian, mm. Blake Lively, for example, kind of doing their own memes and, and mocking the Princess of Wales. And I think now there will be a lot of people feeling pretty ashamed now they know the truth of why we haven't seen Kate. And very poignant in that statement as well, she does point out that William has been by her side because, you know, so many people have been asking questions about that too. And she said, he has been here and it's been a great comfort to me. Yeah, absolutely. And Jane and I have both got young children, Sarah, uh, and we just can't imagine what that must be like to, to explain to, to a young child that you have this battle, you have cancer. Um, we've also got Prince or King Charles diagnosed with cancer yes. recently as well. So two senior members battling this awful, awful disease. Uh, where to from here for the royal family? How will they deal with this going forward, do you think? Yeah, I've got three young children, similar age to the Wales's children, actually. And, you know, it is the conversation no mother ever wants mm. to have with 
uh, child children, is it? And they're also dealing with grandpa's diagnosis. Mm. As you say, Alex, this is the most incredibly challenging time for the royal family. We know that the Prince and Princess of Wales are going to be taking some time off now. Uh, we're not going to be seeing them uh, on Easter Sunday with the rest of the royal family attending church. They are going to be spending the holidays uh, some three weeks with their children privately. Uh, and Prince William will be back to work after that. But there's an enormous weight on his shoulders right now, carrying the weight of responsibility of the royal family, both he and Queen Camilla, while they are both supporting their respective spouses through their treatments and trying to keep everything going. It is incredibly challenging. This is just an unprecedented time for the royal family, and my heart goes out to all of them. Beautifully yeah, said. as does ours. Yeah. Well done, Sarah. Thank you so much for being with us. Great to talk to you. Let's bring in US correspondent Lauren Tamazi now in Los Angeles. Lauren, we've just heard from Prince Harry and Meghan. We have, Jane. Good morning to you. Prince Harry and Meghan issuing a statement just moments ago. It is a short statement reading, we wish health and healing for Kate and the family and hope they are able to do so privately and in peace. Just one line, but a lot of meaning from Kate's brother-in-law. Prince Harry and his wife Meghan there. The couple, of course, live here in California in the United States. We know that when King Charles had his cancer diagnosis, Prince Harry made that whirlwind trip across to the UK. Now, as to whether or not he and or Meghan will travel across to the UK once again in a show of support for Kate, we don't yet know. But uh, this diagnosis certainly leaving shockwaves right across America and the world just moments after Kate's diagnosis was made public. The White House expressing their uh, solidarity with the royal family. Uh, and on behalf of the Biden administration, Corinne Jean-Pierre there, the head uh, of press here for the White House, saying all of us just heard this terrible news. Our thoughts are with the Duchess of Cambridge and her family members and friends during this incredibly difficult time. There has been so much speculation as to Kate's whereabouts. Uh, certainly in the wake of that photograph incident, uh, there's been talk show hosts, celebrities all speculating and today that diagnosis coming uh, and it has been an enormous point of discussion. Sadness and sympathy exploding here in the United States and right around the world, Jane. Lauren Tomasi there in Los Angeles. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to Weekend Today. We're coming on air early this morning to bring you the news that Kate Middleton is receiving cancer treatment. Yeah, the Princess of Wales sharing her diagnosis with the world in a deeply personal video. I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This of course came as a huge shock and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. As you can imagine, this has taken time. It has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment, but most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be OK. As I've said to them, I am well and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal in my mind, body and spirits. Having William by my side is a great source of comfort and reassurance too, as is the love, support and kindness that has been shown by so many of you. It means so much to us both. We hope that you'll understand that as a family, we now need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. My work has always brought me a deep sense of joy and I look forward to being back when I'm able. But for now, I must focus on making a full recovery. At this time, I'm also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, 
please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. Well, let's bring in Nine's Europe correspondent, Edward Godfrey now, who joins us from Buckingham Palace. Good morning to you, Edward. This has come as quite a shock to everybody. A huge shock, Jane. Uh, for months, weeks and months, we've had speculation, rumours, conspiracy theories, wild conspiracy theories. And now, as we've just heard, we've got the facts bravely laid bare by the Princess of Wales herself that she is receiving treatment for cancer. And that message, uh, she says that it was discovered uh, following that abdominal surgery she went in for in January. Tests following that surgery revealing that cancer was present. It was thought at the time that uh, her condition was not cancerous, but those tests revealed uh, afterwards otherwise. And her medical team advised that she undergo some preventative chemotherapy, which she is now in the early stages of. In her message, she said it was a huge shock and it's been a difficult couple of months uh, for her entire family. She's needed to take time to heal from that major surgery before she could commence this initial treatment. Uh, one of the difficulties has been trying to explain to the three children, George, Charlotte and Louis, what's going on. Let's have another listen to her there. As you can imagine, this has taken time. It has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment. But most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be OK. You can imagine how difficult that task would be, trying to explain to three young children exactly what's going on, while the whole world is speculating about what's going on. She also uh, thanked everyone for their well wishes and support and uh, said she's thinking of everyone out there affected by cancer and telling them not to lose hope as she uh, tries to make a full recovery. It's been quite a start to the year for the entire royal family. The last time she was seen was on Christmas Day at Sandringham and then uh, a couple of weeks after the, that, on January 16, it was revealed she'd gone in for the abdominal surgery. The palace, uh, Buckingham Palace, Kensington Palace, had said she wouldn't be seen until after Easter. And then when she hadn't been seen at all, that's when this, the rumour rumor mill really went into overdrive. There was that paparazzi photo which popped up of her in the car with her mother uh, leaving or driving from Windsor, where she lives at Adelaide Cottage. Then there was the Mother's Day photo, of course, which ended up being a great scandal when uh, it was revealed that it had been doctored and it was pulled down by a major photo agencies around the world giving that kill notice. And then we had this uh, video at the weekend of her with Prince William at the farm shop uh, near where they live at Adelaide Cottage. And uh, it was thought that that might quiet down some of these rumours, but it really only kicked things along further. People speculating about that video, talking about her appearance and what might be going on. But uh, we have the facts now. We've heard from the princess herself in that message that she is in the early stages of this cancer treatment. This is going to be a huge shock uh, here in the UK and right around the world. There's already a big reaction to it. Rolling coverage here in London, and this is going to go on for, for some time. Yeah, that initial surgery on January 16, Edward, and, and now a couple of months later, here we are. Thank you. We'll come back to you very soon. Hey there, Today fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my goodness, Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?